Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Squadron 999. While Squadron 42 may be the most famed of all the pilots, Squadron 999 is, or I guess what is really best known as the military's test pilots, is certainly home to the bravest and probably craziest pilots in the United Empire of Earth. Now, formed back in the 2130s, uh, when Robert Space Industries was working on their short-range explorer, the Zeus, there was a need for brave folks to take this ship into space and test it out. Fifty years prior, RSI had created the first quantum engine, which would take ships up to one one-hundredth of the speed of light, but it was really a military-exclusive technology at that point, until civilians and corporations just pleaded for the ability to have this in their own ships. Now, the Zeus was the first step in that direction, but it was a nerve-wracking proposition for RSI because this technology was still really risky, and putting it in the hands of non-military trained pilots based on the issues in the early test was a very scary thing considering the problems that it was kind of presenting with the ship's hull integrity. Now, the issue became very public when a televised broadcast of the ship leaving the Earth's atmosphere had its hull ripped right off the ship, which ended up killing the test pilot as well as leaving the ship in just a bunch of pieces. Now all of a sudden the excitement over the potential for space travel was quickly overcome with a fear as all the realities of the dangers of space were very present in the public's mind. RSI, desperate to get this product to market and kind of from meeting the public's demands, went to the Navy for assistance and famous test pilot Michelle Salino was the first pilot to quantum drive past Jupiter, was the first one that got the call. Now she had been trying to sell the military on a test pilot wing to test new and exciting military craft anyway since she knew that since, or I guess that once the military was really joined by civilians in space, the military would need to grow to help protect and you know serve those people that are actually traveling in space. So this was a natural step for her. The Navy finally bought into what she was selling and the 999th Test Squadron was created. Now 999 was an, just sort of an initial moniker that was supposed to be changed when the squadron ended up being assigned, however it ended up sticking. Salino and her test squadron, um, they spent the first year in this partnership with RSI demanding that the changes were made to the Zeus platform to make it safer before she would even re really risk any of her pilots' lives, which ended up creating a total overhaul of the design to the whole. But in 2137, Salino herself was the first person in the new ship for its test flight. That first flight was a resounding success for RSI, and it was a proof of concept for the military's need to have a test squadron of brave pilots available to do this sort of work. Salino became an overnight celebrity as there was so much attention surrounding her flight, and she was advertised as this person who was willing to sacrifice her own life to give her, you know, to give our species the ability to get out into space. Now, she personally preferred the idea of living, which is why the test squadron was so dedicated in making sure that ships turned out safe to, they just turned out to be safe and reliable. That was their overall goal. And not only did the 999th Squadron make sure that ships were safe, but they also helped to create protocols for flying and maintaining them, as well as training the pilots that would eventually get into the next generation of starships. Probably one of their more impactful projects would come during the first Teveran War, when they would test, help test out one of the first, I guess, versions of the Retaliator Bomber. There was a huge rush from high-ranking military officials to get this ship into production, but then a colonel, Ivor Messer, uh, was able to convince everyone necessary that the test squadron had to sign off on this project before he would sign off on it, which ended up saving a ton of lives, probably countless lives, uh, considering that the, re the Retaliator at that point was considered an unreliable and untested platform, which was really focused on the fact that it had a bad power transfer unit that would mal malfunction during flight, and it would explode, killing everybody on board and destroying the entire ship. So the fact that the test squadron spent their time going through the processes and really vetting out the ship saved thousands of lives, probably. So in today's world, the 999th is stationed in the Kronos system and is part of the 18th Battle Fleet. They chose Kronos based on the wide open space to be able to really put the newest generations of fighters through their paces. And most recently, the Sabre was the subject of their test for the military. The test squadron is known as the Reckless, and when interviewing potential candidates, uh, they ask what that means to recruits. Most would like to answer in ways uh, saying things like, I don't mind sacrificing my life, or I'll push the ship and myself beyond its limits, but that's not what the 999th is all about. Reckless is actually spelled with a W in front, and the saying is kind of backing the goal of wrecking less ships. Safety is a big deal, not only for the pilots, but for anyone they're testing the ships for. So that's a brief history of the 999th Test Squadron for the military and some of their contributions. If you have questions about any of this, please let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more. Have a wonderful day and take care.